All right, good afternoon. Uh, it's really a pleasure to present for such a bright crowd. Uh, my name is Zineida Good, and um, I'm a, a computational and systems immunologist at uh, Stanford. Today, I will tell you about our study uh, that, uh, um, again, was done uh, with Greg Fahey and uh, Bobby Brook and our collaborators uh, on reversing epigenetic uh, aging and immunosenescent trends in uh, humans. Uh, so uh, day to day, uh, I uh, am uh, working on a new type of uh, uh, immune cells called uh, cellular therapies. And uh, even though we're not going to talk about it uh, today, I still wanted to give you a quick uh, um, pitch on these uh, therapies, uh, because you may uh, see uh, some things about them uh, in the near future. Uh, so um, cell therapies is a new class of medicines uh, where a medicine is a living cell uh, that is able to multiply once it gets into your body. Right now, uh, the approved uh, type of these medicines that you may have heard about are CAR T cells uh, that have been um, um, made to uh, fight cancer. Uh, what are CAR T cells? Uh, these are, thank you. Uh, these are the cells that have been isolated from uh, your blood, uh, engineered uh, to recognize a tumor cell and put back uh, into your body uh, to then go uh, and uh, fight cancer within uh, your body. In the type of medicine I'm working on, uh, that is targeting a B cell protein called CD19, uh, these cells, uh, once they are given back to patients with aggressive B cell lymphomas, are able to uh, lead to a complete response in over 58% uh, of uh, in 58 of patients, and long-term cure in about 40% of patients. Uh, so we are now studying how to get this number to 100% and how to make this work for other types of cancer and other diseases. Um, so just wanted to tell you that uh, about this um, uh, engineered cell therapies, they are pretty cool. Uh, but this is not uh, out there enough uh, for this crowd. So what I uh, understand many of you want to hear about is our study on reversing uh, immune aging. Uh, how did that come about? Uh, about uh, six years ago, I had the pleasure to attend um, a uh, health extension salon that uh, Joe uh, uh, Betts, uh, that you, many of you know, uh, has uh, organized. And Greg Fahey was telling his story how he was able to regrow his own thymus in a DIY fas fashion. Uh, and he kept making this uh, point that he is not an immunologist. However, me sitting in the audience, uh, I thought that he really was spot on about uh, many of the theories he had. So after his talk, I came up to him and said, uh, Greg, I'm an immunologist and I'd love to help you. So a uh, few years later, we brought the study, uh, the initial study on attempting to reverse immune aging to Stanford. And here, this is a picture of us with uh, the volunteers who uh, were brave enough to participate in reversing their thymic um, aging uh, with uh, Greg uh, Fahi and Bobby Brook, uh, who really should uh, get the biggest credit for this work, uh, as well as uh, Jim Watson, who was our study physician. So uh, again, as you have heard uh, already, uh, Last month, uh, we published a study that came out in Aging Cell uh, summarizing this work on uh, uh, reversing uh, epigenetic aging in humans. Uh, so what we found is that after a year of uh, this treatment, uh, epigenetic age uh, decreased by 2.5 years compared um, to no treatment. Uh, And uh, it was uh, uh, surprising uh, because uh, this uh, epigenetic uh, analysis was even done as an afterth afterthought, and we did not know what to expect. And uh, even if we thought uh, to hope, we would expect to see slowing down of immune aging, but not reversal. Uh, so that part was a surprising find finding, but also uh, that's why science is fun. You never know what you will find. Uh, 
so how did it, uh, how was it done? Um, the, uh, the uh, idea to reverse immune aging is important because as we age, uh, our uh, diversity of immune cell specificities, which is called immune cell repertoire, is decreasing. And this is in part because um, our thymus, the gland uh, above heart that makes um, immune cells called T lymphocytes, it uh, starts to shrink. In fact, uh, it starts it's shrinking, uh, it starts to shrink in adolescence. And as we age, it uh, gets replaced with uh, fat, uh, so it's not able to create uh, new specificities of immune cells. Uh, and of course, uh, as we age, we are not able to protect ourselves against infections and cancer. Um, so uh, based on the prior uh, observations, uh, as well as uh, based on the experience of Greg Fahir growing his own thymus, um, we uh, started a small study in healthy volunteers uh, who were given a regimen of growth hormone uh, DHA and metformin, uh, where DHA and metformin uh, were used to prevent the side effects of growth hormone, which can cause, for example, uh, diabetes. So again, don't do this at home. This were very carefully monitored uh, uh, volunteers. So their doses of uh, DHA, metformin, and growth hormone could be adjusted based on how well they're doing. Um, the results of epigenetic aging are shown here with uh, three different types to measure it. Again, epigenetic uh, aging is an active area of research and there are several uh, epigenetic clocks that have been developed um, that, uh, with the results shown here that generally by the end of the study, which is 12 months, uh, epigenetic age has been uh, decreased compared to beginning. And we would have expected uh, this number to be uh, up at one by 12 months of study. Uh, and uh, he, this slide shows another uh, epi uh, epigenetic clock called the Grim age, uh, which was uh, shown in one study to predict lifespan and health span, uh, health span called the Grim age. So again, you can see this one uh, decreasing by about 2.5 uh, years. Um, another uh, measure of uh, the health of your immune system is lymphocyte to monocyte ratio. And um, this is again uh, the inability of our bodies to continuously produce lymphocytes uh, with age is uh, part of the reason why we are probably suffering from many uh, diseases with time. Uh, so here in the graph on the left, you can see that uh, this ratio uh, is increasing uh, continuously with treatment. The goal of the study, of course, was to uh, regrow the, regenerate the thymus. And uh, how well your thymus is working can be measured, um, can be estimated by a thymic fat-free fraction. So it's the fraction, uh, the mass, which is supposed to be dark in this image, uh, that is uh, th thought to be active. Um, and again, here you can see that um, different uh, volunteers had different amount, but generally nearly everybody had uh, increase in this number. Uh, so uh, overall, uh, this study did not have very um, strong uh, side effects, uh, and the ones that were observed were reversible, uh, such as joint pain. Um, the goals of the study that we set to, to, to achieve, uh, uh, such as regenerating um, thymus, were achieved, and we had this unexpected finding of reversing epigenetic aging. Um, there were a couple anecdotes of uh, uh, hair of volunteers uh, becoming darker, uh, for example, as shown in this picture. However, this was not formally assessed. This is just the anecdotes. Uh, so to conclude, uh, uh, the, uh, our t the, the team um, of Greg and Bobby and Intervene Immune is now um, starting a new study where they hope to measure more things, do it in a more controlled way, and uh, have a more diverse patient population. So I'll stop here, and I thank you very much.
Great. Do we have one question? Um, come on up. Yes, you. <laughs> Hey, Sina, so great to see you give a presentation on this. I've been looking forward to this. Um, it's one thing to say that the uh, grim age clock is strongly predictive of human lifespan. It's another thing to say that reversing it, uh, apparent, reversing the clock by two years by taking HGH will increase someone's lifespan by two years. That's a very different claim. Do you have any, you're not making that claim, but do you have any intuition? Uh, yes, uh, thanks, Karen. Uh, it is a, uh, there is a lot of work left to do. Uh, for example, really figuring out, does this uh, treatment help the volunteers? Like, do they get any benefit from this other than the correlates that we think uh, can be helpful to them? Uh, so one way is like, yeah, maybe we should measure the hair color <laughs> next time. Uh, second is, uh, yes, we should probably figure out uh, what is the benefit to the immune system. And this can be done without waiting for them to die to understand their lifespan. Uh, but for example, by giving them a flu vaccine or a, 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 another vaccine and measuring how well they're build, able to build the immunity. Um, and we know that as we age, we become less able to uh, build an immunity to flu, uh, following flu vaccination, for example. Yes, there's a lot of work to do. Okay, thank you very much. Now.